Section 12, Outlet Box Sizing of the Canadian Electrical Code, Part 1. In this presentation, we're going to be looking at specifically one rule, and that's 123034. The number of conductors and morettes permitted in a JB or outlet box are determined by calculation and lookup in tables 22 and 23, and we're going to be looking at six subrules within 3034. So subrules 1 and 2, we're going to use most often subrule 3 is for a large object that happens to be mounted on an outlet box. Subrule 4 has to do with different sizes of conductors, and 5 and 6 are kind of like information or data, so pretty straightforward. Let's start with subrule 1. 123034, subrule 1 is divided into four subrules. The first two, A and B, are going to be conductors which are counted inside the box, and these are physical conductors that are present. Now, the difference between A and B, A is an insulated conductor that runs through the box, and B is an insulated conductor entering or leaving the box. Notice that A and B are both specific to insulated conductors. We are never counting bare bonding conductors ever when we do wire count and box sizing. So A, this would be one conductor which passes all the way through the box, and it's easiest to imagine this as EMT with an 1110 box with a conductor that happens to chase through the back. B is two conductors, and that's if we have two conductors which physically come in and terminate to, I don't know, they might terminate together with morettes, or they might terminate to a receptacle or switch. That would constitute two separate conductors. Now C and D of several one are not counted. So C has to do with a conductor where no part leaves the box, and D has to do with very small fixture wires that come on the back of a luminaire when mounted to a ceiling or wall. So C would be the small pigtail that comes off a morette when we're dealing with connections that require this. That conductor doesn't leave the box and therefore is not counted. So this box here would still only contribute two conductors. This one over here, still only two conductors, and that's because the small 18 gauge light fixture wires are not counted. Now, subrule 2 is also something that we need to take into consideration, and subrule 2 is going to tell us how we contribute objects that are not conductors and add them as conductors, and we call these equivalent quote unquote conductors. So, A, B, and C are all physical items that are going to be located inside boxes, and we're going to be told how much these actually contribute, one conductor or two conductors. So let's look at A. A has to do with luminaire type uh, mounting straps and fixture studs, and so a fixture stud or strap is something you typically see with a normal flush mount light, and a hickey is something you would see with a chandelier. Each of these would be considered one insulated conductor. B, one insulated conductor of the largest size terminated under the conductor connector. And so that means if you have two sizes of conductors that terminate under this barrette, the larger size is what we are looking at, but we're going to deal with that more in several four. So for every pair of connectors with insulating caps. So if we only have one morette, that contributes zero conductors, like on the far left-hand diagram. The middle diagram, one conductor is with a pair, and on the far right-hand diagram we see three morettes, it still only contributes one equivalent conductor. C, two insulated conductors for each flush mounted device on a single strap. So a flush mount device is either a decora or a standard toggle switch or perhaps receptacle or single receptacle, duplex or single doesn't really matter, but single strap means it's only taking up one gang of a multi-gang box or it only needs two mounting holes. So a single strap here is just indicating that it could be any number of devices that are mounted on that single strap. There's all sorts of combinations. So what do we do with all this information? Well, to determine the size of the box, you simply add all of the conductors together. Now, what I've omitted from this list here is the fixture strap or hickey, and that's because they're not nearly as common in everyday installations. So we add all of these up and we get a total equivalent conductors, and then we use this in table 23 to find an acceptable box. Now, keep in mind that this process is only if all the conductors inside the box are the same size. So if we go to table 23, we'll see that the box dimensions and trade size are given, and this is not every single box in the electrical industry, rather it's the most common. And so there will be situations where we can't reference this in reality because the box that we're proposing to use is not shown. Now it shows the box dimensions in imperial, so inches. 
The middle column is the capacity, and it has it in milliliters, which is equivalent to centimeters cubed, or in brackets right beside it, it has it in inches cubed. And that's helpful because sometimes we're going to be playing the game between metric volume and imperial volume. On the far right hand side is a quick lookup of maximum number of conductors, and it has them for 14, 12, 10, 8, and 6 gauge wire. The most prevalent that we're going to end up using is perhaps 14 and 12 gauge. And it simply tells you the maximum number of equivalent conductors that could be present inside that particular size of box. Let's do an example or two to see how this works. So example number one is a 14 gauge cable used with a device box. This is more residential. Red wires shown in these diagrams are going to constitute bare bonding conductors. And we want to know what the maximum number of conductor or what the total number of conductors is in this box. And then we'll go to table 23 and find an appropriately sized device box. So bare conductors are not counted. Insulated conductors are four. There are three wire connectors, which means one pair, so that counts as one conductor, and one flush mount device on a single strap, which is a receptacle for two conductors. Total equivalent conductors is then seven. If we take this to table 23, we want a device box that can handle that number of conductors. And so if we see device boxes, they are all just varying in depth. And we can see here that the one that I could choose is the bare minimum. I have realized that there are others that would work, but the bare minimum, so the smallest box that I could get away with, because that presumably is the cheapest, would be a three by two by two and a half at 204 milliliters of capacity. Next example is again, a very similar residential type install, 14 gauge wire, and we wanna know what is the total number of equivalent conductors. Conductors that are cut and terminating to devices are six, zero for morets, and devices are four because I have both a switch and a receptacle. Now this would be a two gang device and we're not going into the sizing of that within table 23. Example three here is more of a commercial build, 14 odd conductors with a square box. So the conductors that are passing through are three, and that's the black, blue, and red that are at the bottom of that four by four box. The conductors that are cut and which terminate to something are six. There's two in each conduit. There is one pair of morets, which constitutes one equivalent conductor and zero devices. So a total of 10 14 gauge wires, and we're gonna take this to table 23 and look up the minimum size square box necessary. So we have 10 14 gauge wires. Here's table 23, and if we go to the square box, and we're looking for one that can handle a bare minimum of 10, and that ends up being the smallest or shallowest square box at four, one and a half inch, and that would be a square shallow box. Now 123034 discusses in several three how we deal with larger objects or flush mount devices, which have a dimension greater than 2.54 centimeters between the mounting strap and the back of the device. And it simply says the total usable space is reduced by the space occupied by the device, calculated as 32 centimeters cubed. Now the easiest way for us to do this is then a basic calculation with the equivalent conductors that we have already done, but then add in the volume of this object and do the whole thing as a volume calculation. So let's see how that works. Again, we're dealing with this same example, residential build, non-metallic sheath cable, device box, 14 aug wire, 2.61 centimeters from strap to the back of the device is this AFCI receptacle. So first step, we're gonna go through our equivalent conductor process, which hasn't changed. It's still seven conductors. But at this point, we're not going straight to table 23. Rather, we're going to calculate what those seven equivalent conductors are in metric volume. So we go to table 22, 14 aug is 24.6 centimeters cubed. And so we're gonna do that calculation out to give us 172.2 centimeters cubed. We're going to add to this the volume of that AFCI receptacle as indicated in several three of 3034. It says 32 centimeters cubed multiplied by the distance that that object has from the strap to the back of the device, which in this case is 2.61, giving me 83.52 centimeters cubed. We then have to add them together. And the total we get is 255.72 centimeters cubed. And we're going to then take this 
to table 23 and size a box. Remember, we're looking for a single device box and we're no longer concerned with the number of equivalent conductors or AUG sizes that are shown on the far right hand side. All we're going to focus on is the milliliters because milliliters and centimeters cubed are equivalent sizes of volume, uh, volume quantification or, or uh, quantity of volume. So let's look at table 23. We're looking at a device box and we're looking at a device box with that bare minimum volume. And so 262 milliliters will be the bare minimum box that I can use for this installation. And it happens to also be the largest single device box that's shown in table 23. So the bare minimum would be a four by two and three eighths by one and seven eighths. Several four, 12, 30, 34 indicates what to do when we don't have a box, uh, when we have a box that is not in table 23 or when we have two different sizes of conductors. Now this happens fairly often and boxes that are not listed in table 23 are simply sized based on metric volume. So pretty straightforward. We've already done a calculation like that. And second, boxes with multiple sizes of conductors are based on the milliliters of each conductor. And if we're read it, the larger conductor is used for the wire connector milliliter calculation. So let's see how that would work. We'll go to our commercial installation and this installation requires an upsize of conductors to compensate for line drop, which is why I have 14 and 8 AUG conductors. The conductors will be moretted together in pairs, and the question is, is the box large enough? Now it's the 4x4x4, four by four by four, and there are no devices like receptacles or um, switches in the box. But what we will have is a total of 5 morets. So this has to be done as an equivalent conductor calculation and then convert it all to metric volume. So table 22, space for insulated conductors. I have 14 gauge and eight gauge. I'm first going to count the number of uh, terminating conductors and quantify their volume. So 14 AUG, 24.6 centimeters cubed times five, and eight AUG, 45.1 centimeters cubed times five. Now, in addition to this, I need to take into account the morets. There are two pairs of morets in this installation. And so those two pairs of morets are moretting together a larger and smaller conductor. The rule simply states, use the larger conductor because the moret has to be quantified. Is it going to be an 8 gauge or a 14 gauge? And it says, consider it an 8 gauge. So this is calculated as a larger conductor size, which would be 8 gauge, 45.1. That should say centimeters cubed times 2 gives me 90.2 centimeters cubed. And we add that all up, 438.7 centimeters cubed is this box large enough? Now, what we need to do at this point is cross-reference. We need to figure out, is the volume of a four by four by four? And that would all be imperial inches, at least large enough for 438.7 centimeters cubed. So the problem is that in imperial, that junction box is 64 cubic inches. But what we've calculated for the volume requirement is in imperial. That is cubic centimeters, also known as milliliters. So if you go to page 33 of the CEC, there's a conversion table, and it provides a multiplier from previous uh, or from standard units of measurement to previously used units of measurement. And the one that we want is this one right here. Centimeters cubed is the one that we use today, and the previously used unit is cubic inches. And it says the multiplier is 0.061. So we take the metric cubic centimeters times 0.6. 0 0.061, and that will give us the imperial cubic inches. So 438.7 times 0 0.061 gives me 26.76. Oh, we got tons of space. Remember, our 4 by 4 by 4 is 64 cubic inches. Yes, a 4 by 4 by 4 could easily contain the wiring splices for this example. Several 5 and 6 are fairly straightforward. Several 5 is simply making uh, abundantly clear that the volume of the box is not shrunk for any of the additional objects which may happen to have portions within the inside volume. So box connectors, connectors rather, lock nuts, bushings like plastic bushings on the ends of, uh, of conduit or clamps, anything like that is not considered to reduce the volume. They've already really taken that into account and they say, eh, it's kind of neg negligible. So it does not contribute. However, several six where sectional boxes are ganged or 
where plaster rings, extension, or raised covers are used in conjunction with the box. They are marked with their volume measurement, and the space in the box shall be the total volume of the assembled section. So that means on a 4x4 box, in a commercial build that is used for a single device, like a switch, the mud ring or plaster ring that we use, which is shown here, actually contributes in volume. And so you can take that into account when you do your box fill, and you might not have to get a deep 4x4 box, but a shallow might be sufficient with that additional 58 milliliters of internal volume available.